Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Ba'a Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'a Hashem, Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, those of the men that taught me the truth of the Bible. And Yahweh Ba'a Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'a Hashem, Kodash. Barak a thumb to the elect of Israel. So what we're looking at here is an article from www.rt.com concerning North Korea and the United States and um, their breaking ties, if you will. Um, as you can see here in the title, <clears throat> it says, North Korea slams US for hatching a criminal plot against Pyongyang after Pompeo's cancelled trip. And that's why it says what it says in the book of uh, First Thessalonians, uh, chapter 5, verse 3. Uh, the Apostle Paul was writing a letter unto the Israelites that were living in Thessalonica, Greece at the time, and he was saying unto them that for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh, roughly paraphrasing, okay, and this is like an indication of that uh, scripture, that prophecy, all right, because it was just a few months ago where, you know, the United States was coming together with, the, with North Korea, you know, trying to bring about peace and the United States were trying to denuclearize North Korea. But um, no, we're not living in that time, okay? Pursuant to the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, we're living in a time of war, all right? And the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, is working on the minds of these various different presidents, these various different prime ministers around the world to bring about that war, okay? You know, World War Three that we read about in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter and 14th verse, okay? The third war. So, um, you know, I'm going to get into this article here and bring out some scriptures and hopefully edify you brothers out there that may be watching, okay? So, um, it goes on to say, North Korea has lashed out at the US for double dealing and hatching a criminal plot against Pyongyang days after Donald Trump cancelled Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's up-and-coming trip to North Korea, all right? So, the jig is up on these Edomites right and how they get down now the reason i say that is because for the longest this is how esau has been getting down right esau edom the so-called white man double dealing you know uh, that's his treacherous ways as a matter of fact let's just look that term up real quick in um on the google double dealing meaning <clears throat> So it says double dealing, the practice of working to people's disadvantage behind their backs. <laughs> and here's the, the synonyms. It says duplicity, treachery, betrayal, double crossing, unfaithfulness, untrustworthiness, infidelity, bad faith, disloyalty, breach of trust, fraud underhandedness, cheating, dishonesty, deceit, deceitfulness, deception, falseness, <laughs> right? So who does this fit according to the Bible, right? All these synonyms that we're reading about here on Google regarding double dealing, who does this fit? It fits the so-called white man Esau Edom, right? The Edomites, which the Edomites today are you so-called white people. That's who you are according to the Bible. You're the Edomites. And this fits you to a T. And we've got scriptures to prove that. Okay? So let's go back to um, that article real quick. And read that paragraph again. It says, North Korea has lashed out at the US for double dealing and hatching a criminal plot against Pyongyang days after Donald Trump cancelled Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's up-and-coming trip to North Korea. So like I said, the jig is up on these Edomites, man, and how they, how they get down. Right? All these various different nations around the world they're seeing Esau for who he is, which is the devil. And this devil has been double dealing for the past 500 to 600 years, right? Especially with our nation, right? Our nation, I'm referring to the Israelites, our so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, in particular, the tribe of Gad in this case, okay? Um, as a matter of fact, I pulled this article um, to prove a point. Uh, what we're looking at here is an article from www.npr.com, all right? And the title says, broken promises on display at native american treaties exhibit okay and you know these native americans that they're referring to these will be referring to the tribe of gad of the nation of israel right you so-called native americans goes on to say for centuries treaties have defined the relationship between many native american nations and the u.s more than 370 ratified treaties have helped 
the US expand its territory and led to many broken promises made to American Indians. And that's why it says what it says in what's that? Psalms 55 verse 21. His words were smoother than butter, but in his in his heart uh, was war, roughly paraphrasing, man. Okay. So basically these these uh, nations around the world they're getting you know they get getting a wind of that you know of how esau actually deals and this is what's going to lead to world war three okay so it goes on to say um well I, i'll read it again real quick north korea has lashed out at the u.s for double dealing and hatching a criminal plot against pyongyang days after donald trump counseled secretary of state mike pompeo's up-and-coming trip to new to north korea it says Rodong Sinman, the official newspaper of the North's ruling party, said in an editorial that U.S. units based in Okinawa, Japan, were staging drills aimed at infiltration into Pyongyang. The paper was citing an unnamed South Korean media outlet. The U.S. is busy staging secret drills involving man-killing special units while having a dialogue with a smile on its face. Which again, this leads us to, what's that, Psalm 55, man. Let's just get that real quick. This is Psalm 55, verse 21. It says, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. This is speaking about the so-called white man Esau Edom, right? This is his nature. This is his, his character, okay? To be able to speak, you know, politely, to be able to speak charismatically, to be able to speak softly, to be able to appear as he's, he's doing no wrong. But war is in his heart, okay? It says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords, okay? And this... Uh, article that we're looking at here is a perfect example of uh, that scripture that we just read in Psalms 55 verse 21 okay concerning Esau Edom and his nature the devil okay it says the U.S. is busy staging secret drills involving man killing special units while having a dialogue with a smile on its face according to the paper which added that Pyongyang cannot help but note the double dealing attitudes of Washington it goes on to say such acts prove that the U.S. is hatching a criminal plot to unleash a war against the DPRK North Korea and commit a crime which deserves merciless divine punishment. And that's what's coming to America, man, all right? Merciless divine punishment from up on high, from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son, okay? And by way, these ICBMs that these various different countries actually have they're going to launch all their missiles upon america which is babylon the great okay it goes on to say it's not yet clear which drills the north was referring to the japanese island of okinawa hosts nearly half of the forty-seven thousand u.s troops based in japan which again this leads us to uh the book of habakkuk the second chapter all right because that's that's esau um spreading his military out across the globe what's his military doing in, in japan uh, this is um habakkuk chapter 2 verse 5 it says yeah also because he transgressed by wine which is his philosophies his his doctrines his democracy it says he is a proud man which is the nature of these edomites they're proud thinking that no one's going to bring them down all right it says neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people which is why this place america is known as babylon the great but the point that we want to extract from this scripture is where it says neither keepeth at home so esau edom is not keeping at home right now because his home is supposed to be here in america but as you can see here in in this article he's got forty-seven thousand troops out there in japan okay japan on the island of okinawa according to pentagon data so reason to say the troops repeatedly hold military exercises in the area a spokesman at the u.s embassy in seoul told Reuters that he had no information about the military exercise mentioned in the paper and so that's basically what i'm going to read from this article but i just want to update you you know regarding you know this up and coming world war three and just to prove the point that this so-called white man esau edom is indeed the devil 
the treacherous one. As a matter of fact, let me close out with that scripture in uh, Isaiah 33. Um, since I mentioned the word treachery, this is Isaiah 33, verse 1. It says, Woe to thee that spoilest, which the word woe represents destruction. And that's what's coming to you, Edomites, okay, for all your all your wickedness, okay? You've been ruling this world in straight wickedness for the past 2,000 years, all right? From the time of the Greeks to the ancient pagan Roman Empire to the new revised Roman Empire, which is coming in form of NATO and the EU that we have today, okay? It says, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled. And who did you spoil? The children of Israel, us so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, all right? You stole our land, you stole our heritage, you stole our nationality, you stole our honor, man. It says, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, because Esau hasn't been touched yet. Okay, these Edomites, the devil, Esau Edom, which his spirit goes all the way back to Cain and his descendants, they ain't been touched yet. They're still a fugitive on a, on a run. And that's why it says what it says in uh, what's that, Nahum, the first chapter about how the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, will not at all acquit the wicked. The wicked, of course, being Esau Edom, it says, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. And who's the day that's going to deal treacherously with these Edomites? It begins with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, alongside the Israelites, our so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But all these other nations too, they're going to deal treacherously before, before the kingdom of heaven is physically established. All these countries and nations around the world are going to deal treacherously with these Edomites by launching their missiles upon Esau strongholds, okay, out here in America, over there in Europe, even places like Russia. Russia's going to get hit, man. And that's why it says what it says in Isaiah 34 verse 5 about how the sword of the Lord is going to be bathed in heaven, talking about these missiles, and shall come down upon Idumia, the people of the Lord's curse, okay? So that's what's about to take place. So this was just a quick lesson to update you, brothers. I'm going to close out by giving all praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh Barshim, Yahweh Shai, Barshim, Rakar Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, the men that taught me the truth of the Bible. And Yahweh Barshim, Yahweh Shai, Barshim, Rakar Kodash, Brakatham, to the elect of Israel. Shalom.